people go searching, but sometimes you don't have to search further than your nose because it's right here. I was hatched here, I was matched here, and I hope to be dispatched from here. Since I was a very young man, I was involved with St. Bernard. Like I had it in me that I wanted to be kind of holy. Been involved with St. Bernard, starting with the school since kindergarten. I have been a parishioner all my life. My grandfather helped build the church. We're instrumental in being part of the movement that, uh, to change the whole rectory. St. Bernard Church has been at the heart of Bro Bridge for over 170 years. Not even our first, but our second uh, vocation from this parish. He entered seminary in the 1880s. Uh, was a man named Jules B. Jeanmard, uh, would be ordained a priest, and then would become the first bishop of the Diocese of Lafayette 100 years ago. I'm competitive, and when you say that the first bishops of the Diocese of Lafayette live two blocks down, we all have to be witnesses to the faith that Christ gives, and we never know who's watching. Uh, we never know when the Lord's going to put a little ping, a little idea in somebody's head to follow Him in a radical way. My wife and I lost our middle son in a car accident. Every day for a whole year, I came to visit him. I was struggling with his death. Father Leger, I, I didn't know he was watching me. And one day he stopped me and he asked me who I was, I was seeing and I told him my son. He said, what church do you go to? And uh, automatically he convicted me. Well, I said, I, I don't go to church. And he just looked at me in my eyes and he says, I'll see you Sunday. And that Sunday, I came to church when he did the sermon. He uh, kind of looked around and when he spotted me, he just nodded his head. And that was the start, I think, of my spiritual conversion. And I think St. Bernard is the cornerstone. So in these walls here at St. Bernard was the people I was going to be around, so I wanted to do what they did. I love the, the parishioners. Remember Father Fruget was the one. He brought us under the oak tree by where the bridge is now and, and told us the story of the life of, of St. Bernard. And man, I knew I was in the right parish. What I love about St. Bernard Parish, the people involved in it. We sit in the same pew just about every week and other families do the same thing. So you just watch everybody's children grow. You grow together as a family. We have a real strong community. Well, the Cajun people are loving people, so that gives them a plus. The Catholic Church of St. Bernard, we're, we're a family. The more you serve in the different ministries, the more you get that feeling and you get comfortable with these people. The friends that I've made here at St. Bernard Church are friends not only within the church, but they're friends outside of the church. I recently became a Catholic. I went through the RCIA program, so I started just reaching out and just praying daily that God would show me where He wanted me to be and he directs me to the Adoration Chapel. My husband, he had an hour that he served weekly. I really think now in the back of my mind he was praying that something would spark. So I started giving an hour in the Adoration Chapel. I began fasting because I felt an urgency and a longing to get closer to God. I feel so welcome. The love and support I have felt since becoming a Catholic has been so overwhelming. Our marriage has been enforced because we have the support of the parish. And you get the support of the parish, you avail yourself to it, it's there. What sticks out most to me is how complete of a community this is. I think what's unique about St. Bernard Church is that you get to see all the phases of life here. It, it's a community that I think brings a unique charism of family life. And one that is not simply curious, but is hungering for knowledge of the Catholic faith and in ways to grow in holiness. But we want to give people an opportunity to be present to Christ, to put themselves in front of Christ where He can speak to them. Well, my husband and I have been going to daily Mass for nearly 40 years, which is half of my life. Since joining the church, I actually try my best to make a Mass every day. You know, it's a privilege to be in God's presence and receive His body daily. To me, that's my strength for the day. And you know, when I miss and I'm sick or something, that's worse than my illness, is not being able to come to Mass. To me, that was the beginning of the day. But I made sure that every kid made their first nine first Fridays and their five first Saturdays. My entire family can enjoy coming to church together, receiving the Eucharist, praying together. It's a special invitation. You coming to see the King of Kings. 
and the Perpetual Adoration Chapel is probably if all the things that we've accomplished here has been my greatest satisfaction. The chapel started in 1984. And we stayed open day and night. Going to Holy Hours is nearly a necessity. I've had Saturday at four in the morning since it began. It's so one Friday evening. I was sitting in the adoration hour and I felt as though the Holy Spirit that night sat next to me and spoke to me and asked, why not come home? And I asked him, what do you want me to do? I need to draw closer to you. I need to be a better mom and a better wife. And I really feel as though the Holy Spirit said, I want your brokenness, I want your heartache, everything. Why not come home? And it is such a beauty. I remember being young and going there and just wasting time with God and being around the people who were in the Adoration Chapel. And they're still in the Adoration Chapel. Just the, the idea that every hour of the day, at this church, this community, there were people praying. But if you really know Jesus, you can't help but love Him. And then if you love Him, you're going to know Him. And then if you know Him, you're going to serve Him. Serving on the altar is the highlight. He's part of the miracle. <laughs> and I'm three feet away from Him. I enjoy serving the Mass and serving the people. I've gotten involved in the religious education program. I love teaching the older students in the confirmation class. This, where I am in my life now, answering to God, was a result of what I received there. Catholic Daughters of the Americas is a very old organization for women. And basically what we do is we support our pastor, just being women wanting all the same thing, just to serve the Lord and serve the people. It's seeing work of the church on a different side. My mother used to volunteer here at the church to straighten up the missalettes. So when I retired in 2003, I came and I started helping, making sure the priest vestments were all clean. I have seven or eight very wonderful workers, and we're called Martha's Guild. Being able to help maintain the altar, it just fills my heart to be able to do that. Jesus is right there. This is His home, and what greater honor is it for me to be able to be so close to Him right there and to be able to make this church the most beautiful that it can be for Him and the cleanest that it can be for Him. Uh, St. Bernard Parish has had a lot of programs. I'm not saying it makes me more holy, but it makes me more knowledgeable. And maybe through that knowledge you can access to something that might inspire you to be a little bit more holy. That's a good thing about belonging to the parish. Avail yourself to what's available for you. Yeah, because the more you get involved in the church, you don't realize how many people are involved at doing so many things. Because that's just the beginning. St. Bernard School is one of my great joys. It's, it's such a, a peaceful, fun-filled place to be. St. Bernard School dates back to 1891. And then as we got into about the 1950s, it became financially a little bit more difficult to continue with the institution. But then in 1982, uh, we had a group of parents after the school had closed that said, we, we want our school back. We want our school because the school is that important to the epicenter of our community and who we are. I graduated in the 12th grade in 1959, the last year of the old school. I actually came out fourth in my class. I was only eight graduates. I was blessed to be a student here as a child and now I'm a teacher and I get to send my own children to St. Bernard. I love our school, our St. Bernard Crusader. We're blessed to have that in our community. Catholic education is important because it teaches why we exist. I think one of the key aspects that allows Catholic education to be what Catholic education is, is the instilling and the fostering of virtue. Just the words our principals say and their actions and how they present themselves are definitely beautiful examples of how we are supposed to act. St. Bernard's the best school in the world because we get to learn about God. We want to provide a Catholic education, uniquely Catholic, and also, of course, having a well-rounded education. From the moment they enter our campus, they become part of our family in pre-K and work all the way up even into eighth grade, and then even after. We're continuing to pray for them and nurture them. We have to show and, and, and demonstrate the beauties of our Catholic faith uh, to our young people to pass that on. There's a lot of people that have been there before us. People don't realize the history and the value you have 
all of that support you had, that, that's what built up this parish. And that's the shoulders we're standing on. I want to be part of that legacy. I do owe something back to my community because that's how the faith is passed on, generation after generation. That's how Christ lives on. If they want the truth, you can find it in our church. I love being Catholic because it's the one and only. Modern man does not really respond to teachers. He responds to witnesses. We're trying to prepare for something that is to come, which is heaven. After almost 45 years of my life, I didn't realize I was missing certain pieces, but God's putting it all in perspective now. And I think becoming Catholic was one of the final pieces. It's a lively parish. I'm incredibly blessed to be here at St. Bernard. I couldn't be happier, and uh, I look forward to the days ahead. And I know being Catholic has been, I guess it's been my salvation. I would be a very different person without St. Bernard. It's, it's probably one of the greatest gifts that God ever gave me. I never felt love like I have since March 28th when I became a Catholic.